Hello, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today on this webinar, uh, on this Zoom call. Uh, my name is Derek. Hello. Uh, I am from the University of the Fraser Valley, located in Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada, uh, which is just outside of Vancouver. Uh, that's actually where I am right now. So I am currently uh, just outside, uh, just around our university. That's kind of where I live in Abbotsford. Uh, right now where I am, uh, it is actually, just looking at the clock here, uh, 8 p.m. on Saturday. So hello from yesterday to all of you who are uh, there in Sunday morning in, uh, in Vietnam, wherever you are uh, within Vietnam. Uh, thank you again very much for joining us. Uh, so what I'll do for you all today is I'm going to take you through a, a short presentation, should last about 30 minutes or so, uh, telling you all about the University of the Fraser Valley, uh, our programs, entrance requirements, uh, all that uh, information for you as well. If at any time you have a question about the program, uh, about anything about the university, uh, feel free to put your questions into the chat box. Uh, we have some people who will be monitoring that chat. Uh, so that way uh, we can actually watch uh, those questions and see what's coming in. And I see some of you typing in right now, good morning and hello messages. So thank you all, hello again to you too uh, for that. So what I'm gonna do right now uh, is I am going to share my screen. I'm gonna get the presentation going. So once again, if you have any questions, feel free to type it into the box. All right. Cool. All right. Hopefully everybody can see my screen. I think it should be good to go for everyone here. Uh, so once again, uh, I am from the University of the Fraser Valley, uh, and we're located in beautiful Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, and we have we call this presentation "Far from Ordinary" uh, because honestly, our university uh, is fantastic. It really does go above and beyond what it tries to do for your education, for your personal life, your uh, all that as well as we get to going for the presentation. Uh, first. What I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself too is I'm actually a former student from the university. So I graduated with my Bachelor of Business Administration from UFE. Uh, so everything I'm about to talk to you comes from a former student. Uh, I am one of these 42,000 alumni uh, that we have at the university. Uh, the photo that you see right now, that is of our campus in Abbotsford. Uh, it's a beautiful place to study. Uh, we're close to the mountains. A lot of trees, a lot of open spaces that we have there as well. At UFE, uh, we have roughly 14,000 students uh, that call UFE home. Uh, out of those 14,000 students, uh, we have about 2,000 international students, uh, a little bit more than 20% of our, our student body is international. And it's a diverse mix. Uh, we have students from over 86 different countries, uh, and they're from all across the globe. Uh, they're from you know, Vietnam, we have many Vietnamese students with us as well. Uh, they're from Brazil, they're from India, they're from China, they're from Europe, they're from everywhere. Uh, so it's a really good mix of diverse people that you get to study with. Uh, yes, there are tons of Canadians that you have in there too, uh, but it's not just Canadians. So we really do try to give you as much of a global experience right on our campus as possible. A UFE is what's known as a teaching focused public institution. Uh, when I say teaching focus, the main thing, the main role all of our professors try to do is to try to make sure that they create as a best learning environment for you, the student, as possible. Uh, and we try to do that with small class sizes. So you can see there, our average class size uh, for our students is only 25 students per classroom on average. The biggest class you will ever see is only 36 people per class. Uh, honestly, that was one of the things I loved about being a student at the university is the fact that I got a lot of one on one attention with the professors. Uh, the professors got to know me. I got to know the professors. Uh, if I had questions, it was really easy to ask, raise my hand, get my answer as well. Uh, I could also talk to the professors outside of the class time uh, and use their office hours to be able to go and get uh, more questions answered to get a better understanding of the material. 
every single class you take at UFE, the professors will give you different time periods throughout the week that you actually get a chance uh, to actually be able to go to their office and ask extra questions as well. So you have tons of one-on-one -on -one, uh, time with the professors. One of the other great things about having smaller class sizes is the fact that you get to know your fellow students. Uh, when you only have 25 people in your class, it's really easy to, to form study groups, to, to make friends, to get to know people. Uh, it's, it's one of the best perks about having those small class sizes is the fact you get to create those real good tight bonds with your fellow students as you move forward from class to class to class. Uh, also on the very top corner, you can see our QS stars ranking. Uh, we're very proud of this uh, QS, which does a lot of the global universities rankings. Um, last year, you can see in 2019, uh, they gave us a perfect five out of five star ranking for the quality of our teaching and the employability of our students after they graduate. So everything we try to do at UFE is, again, try to make it above ordinary. And that goes from our teaching quality to make sure that after you graduate, you do get a chance to, to have a chance to, to possibly land a really great job. Uh, from that too. And I'll talk a little bit more of that in the future. But first, let's talk a little bit more about where we are in Canada. So Canada's big. It is a large, large country, uh, second largest country in the world. And so where we are is we're located in the province of British Columbia, uh, out here on the West Coast. So most of you might be familiar with Toronto. Toronto is in the province of Ontario, located over here. And our city, where I am in Abbotsford, is all the way on the very southern westernmost tip of the British Columbian province in Canada there. Give you a little bit more of a closer look on where we are. So Abbotsford, as I mentioned, is our main city. That's our main campus that we're located. So that was represented by this dot here. And we're actually not too far away from downtown Vancouver. So driving wise, we are a one hour drive away from downtown Vancouver. Uh, honestly, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Uh, I've had a chance to travel a lot in my time. Uh, I lived in Asia for a while, I lived in Europe for a little while, uh, traveled uh, to Latin America, uh, and every time I come back to Vancouver, it still takes my breath away. One of the most beautiful cities uh, in the world. But not only are we close to Vancouver, we are also very, very close to the United States. Uh, in fact, from our university campus, you could walk to the United States border in only 30 minutes. Uh, so this way, our students, if they would want, uh, while they're studying with us, they have a chance to be able to pop down to the United States, have some chance to travel down there as well, uh, to get some different experiences outside of just Canada as well. Now, I would recommend maybe going down to the States right now. Uh, it's a little crazy down there, um, but you can, uh, if you would like to, from our campus. It's very, very close. As you can see there, the city of Seattle is only 2.5 hours away uh, from our main campus. So let's talk a little bit more about Abbotsford, give you some insight uh, into what you would call your, your home uh, in our city here. So the city of Abbotsford, uh, this is the fifth largest city in our province of British Columbia. Uh, we have a population around 140,000 people, which is a great size. You know, it's, it's big enough with all those people to have shopping malls, movie theaters, restaurants, uh, all the kind of stuff you would see in a major, major city but it also feels like a much smaller, cozier city at the same time. It's kind of that middle ground, not too big, not too small, just the right size. Um, I actually call it, Abbotsford's been my home uh, for most of my life. Uh, so I mentioned I moved away for a little while, lived in Asia, lived in Europe. Uh, but when I am in Canada, uh, this is from the, you know, from the time I was in uh, elementary school all the way up to university uh, and now, Abbotsford's always been my home. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, it's got nature. It's got all the city elements you need. It is a beautiful, beautiful place uh, to, to, to study and to live and to potentially maybe down the road raise a family. Who knows uh, for that as well. So with a population of 140,000 and being the fifth largest city in BC, we're also one of the most diverse cities in Canada not just in our province of British Columbia, but all across Canada. Um, we actually have about a third, one third of all of our residents, 33% uh, is a visible minority. So we have people not only at our university from all across the globe, we have people living in our city uh, from everywhere as well. Again, diverse mix uh, from Asians to Europeans to Latin Americans, a great mix of people all in our city of Abbotsford as well. 
Uh, we also like to have a lot of fun events. So you can see here, we have about 150 community events every year. Uh, this is from like our, what's called Jam and Jubilee, which is an outdoor music festival, to carnivals, to fairs, to, to markets, uh, and everything in between there. There's always stuff going on, lots to do, lots to see uh, when you're in Abbotsford. Now let's talk about residents uh, and where you might be able to live uh, when you come over here. So at our university, uh, we do have our own residence building uh, that you can live in. Uh, you can see in the top corner here, a little bit of a photo, a layout of what a residence building would look like. So all of the students who get to live on campus, uh, they actually get their very own bedroom. So you don't have to share a bedroom with anybody. Uh, you just share a suite with one other person. All of our suites are the exact same layout, the exact same style. Uh, every suite has two individual bedrooms. It has a bathroom with a stand-up shower and then a little kitchen area with a fridge, microwave, table chairs, all that as well. Uh, one of the coolest things about our residence building, which not a lot of residence buildings have across Canada, um, is actually in the main common room floors on the first, second, and third floor in the common areas, there's actually full kitchens. So you can do all of your own cooking right in the residence building as well. You don't have to buy a meal plan if you don't want to. Uh, if you want to buy a meal plan, no problem. I'll talk about that on the next screen, uh, but you don't have to. Uh, you can actually do a lot of your own cooking right there in the building uh, and store it in your fridge and heat it up in the microwave and have everything there for you as well. As I mentioned, if you do want a meal plan, uh, we have one available as well uh, for an extra charge of $1,000 to $2,000 per semester lot of different ways you can use your, your meal plan on campus. Uh, we have everything from Fairgrounds Coffee, which is our version of Starbucks, which is a student-run coffee shop, so it's fully run by our students. Street, which is a taco shop, a pizza shop called Rebel Pizza, and of course we have to have a Tim Hortons on campus. Uh, you know, we cannot be a public Canadian university and not have a Tim Hortons on campus, probably one of the most iconic restaurants uh, and fast food chains that we have in Canada right now as well. I'm pretty sure it might actually almost be a mandatory law that Canadian universities have to have a Tim Hortons on campus. Don't quote me on that. I'm not a legal expert, but I'm pretty sure it's a law. Uh, so yeah, so we have a Tim Hortons on campus that you can use, as well as uh, Triple O's, which is burgers, fries, milkshakes, uh, and our cafeteria, which has a wide ranging options uh, from stir fries to, to wraps to salads to soups and everything in between there. Uh, so if you do want to, uh, to, to use the meal plan when you're living on campus, tons of different options, food, food sources from uh, all types of areas uh, that you can use uh, and eat while you're on campus. All right, let's switch it up and talk a little bit about our programs. So UFE is primarily an undergraduate focused university. So we have, as you can see there, 17 different bachelor's degrees, almost 100 different certificate and diplomas, but only three master's programs. Uh, so we are primarily an undergraduate focused university uh, for students who are looking for uh, two year diplomas or four year bachelor's degree at the undergraduate level. First program that we're gonna talk about is actually my former program is our School of Business. Uh, so our School of Business, we have a two year diploma uh, or a four year bachelor's degree and within the four-year bachelor's degree, we have all these majors and minors that you can see on the screen now. Areas from marketing, finance, accounting, human resource management, which was my major, that is what I took, uh, and operations management, and soon to be international business, which is gonna be introduced very, very soon uh, for our program. Now, the way our business program works is for the first two years, all students take pretty much the exact same classes. It's a, it's a very general, open two years. So in those first two years, you'll do a little bit of marketing, a little bit of finance, a little bit of accounting uh, to try to give you a very well-rounded base for all of the business disciplines. Then in your third year, that's when you specialize. And that's when you get to pick your major uh, and focus really in on that one niche area of business that you want to do. Uh, if you don't want to choose a major, that's fine. You can do general business all the way through, uh, but it'd be in your third year that you specialize in the areas that you can see on here as well. Now our business program, for my personal thing, what I loved about this too, is the fact that they blended 
very well the theory of the classroom with real world case studies. So you always got to learn about how to apply the theory to real world time, things that are going that way. Uh, there's always projects, a lot of teamwork, a lot of public speaking. So if you're nervous about public speaking, trust me, by the time you finish your business program, that will be all gone. Because uh, per every class you do, there is pretty much some sort of presentation that you get to do uh, to be able to, to work on your presentation skills, public speaking skills, and everything for that. All right. Next program that we have coming up here is our uh, science programs. So for our science programs, as you can see on here, we have everything from your traditional courses, biology, chemistry, physics, uh, to some great agriculture programs. If you're interested into agricultural science, uh, we have that option as well. Uh, kinesiology, which is sports science. That's what the photo is on the screen here. And then computer science, probably one of our fastest growing areas of study. Uh, this is just a booming, booming program and sector that we have. Uh, within computer science, you can focus in on either security, cybersecurity, and, uh, programming, or even artificial intelligence and data mining uh, is where we get into, into computer science as well. Uh, for kinesiology, which is the sports science program, that's the one that you can see right now, uh, again, on the, the screen here. Uh, that one is really all about work, learning about how the body moves and how to track and improve the physical body through uh, various exercises and techniques and that. Uh, for that, we also have two options. That's the, the what's called our exercise science route for people who might want to get into uh, chiropractic, rehabilitation, physiotherapy, that's exercise science. Uh, or we have one that's called pedagogy for people who want to get into personal training uh, and become coaches or potential uh, physical education teachers down the road as well. Uh, the Bachelor of Science uh, is a four-year option, um, or if you want, we also have a two-year shorter version with the Associate of Science. Moving on to our Bachelor of Arts program. Uh, when I say arts here, uh, I'm really talking about the social sciences and the humanities. So these would be courses like our psychology, political science, uh, media and communications, economics, criminal justice, those type of programs that we have here as well. Um, my favorite part about our Bachelor of Arts program is how flexible it is and how you can mix and match different components uh, of your passions into one degree. Uh, for instance, uh, let's say you want to do psychology as your major, uh, you're more than welcome to also do potentially uh, a political science minor or a global development studies major with an economics minor. Uh, so it really does give you the opportunity to take two different passions that you have and combine it into one degree uh, for yourself. Also, if you're a little bit unsure of what you want to do as your major, you're, you're kind of on the fence Either you have no idea, or maybe you have 20 ideas and you can't pick just one. Uh, in the Bachelor of Arts, in your first year, you can actually take you know, up to you know, seven different subjects from seven different areas across the university to try out those classes. You know, and maybe you'll take a, a, a psychology course, a criminology course. Uh, you can even try a business course in that first year if you really want to. Uh, and because arts is so flexible and so uh, open for students, all of those different courses would still count towards your Bachelor of Arts degree. So it really does give you a chance to kind of test out different subjects in your first year to see which ones you like, which ones you might want to pursue later on in years two, three, and four down the line. Up next, we have fine arts. So this is kind of your traditional arts here, uh, but also moving into from traditional to more digital art. Uh, we have our graphic digital design program, media arts, visual arts, um, and all that. Cool fun fact about where we live around Vancouver is we actually have a nickname called Hollywood North. So there are a lot of film and TV productions that happen up in our city of Vancouver, uh, as well as a lot of tech companies, startup companies, and everything there. So we have tons of jobs right now that's been growing in graphic and digital design. So a lot of our students have been able to land some really great jobs or do freelance work on the side from their home and be their own boss. Uh, our graphic design program has a two-year diploma or four-year bachelor as well. So if students want to focus just on graphic design, 100% only on graphic design, you can do that in a two-year diploma. 
But if you want to enhance your skills and add different skill sets, different disciplines to your graphic design, the four-year degree program will give you a chance to do just that. Now for entrance into the fine art programs, uh, there is a portfolio requirement. So students are required uh, to have a portfolio and to submit that uh, with their application. And for the portfolio, you would need 10 to 15 different pieces of artwork. Uh, and if you're interested in graphic design, media arts, visual arts, any of that kind of stuff, uh, feel free to let us know and I can give you more details about that portfolio. The last group of programs you have coming up here is what we call our professional studies programs. Um, this would include computer information systems, IT, uh, which is by far our, our most popular program when it comes to our, our international students coming in. Um, this would be for networking, um, uh, kind of IT infrastructure, that area as well when it comes to that. Very closely resembled to computer science, but this is more of kind of the applied hardware IT information networking systems for, for uh, CIS there. Also in here, we have our aviation program. Uh, when I say aviation, this is actually pilot training. Uh, and what's cool about this pilot training is that um, it's actually a joint program between the pilot training and our business diploma or business degree. So students, when you finish their, their pilot training, become commercial pilots, all that, uh, you would also graduate with either a business diploma or business degree at, at that point too. Uh, all of the aviation pilot training is done by one of our local flying schools. Uh, and then we give you credit for all of your uh, licenses and training that you complete. So when you complete your pilot's license, your commercial license, instrument rating, multi-engine rating, instructor rating, once you have all of those credentials, we take those licenses, those credentials, and then give you university credit for them towards the business degree. The reason we did it towards the business degree as well uh, is to give students more, more options. Uh, moving forward. Maybe you don't want to be a pilot your whole life. Maybe you want to try to do something different. Uh, now you have a business degree to use as well on top of your pilot training. Below aviation, uh, you can see our human services program. So this would be social work, child and youth care, uh, education assistant, more of those nature of programs too, more of the human services uh, as well. Now, in terms of entrance requirements, uh, so we have about a hundred different programs with about a hundred different entrance requirements. They're all slightly different. So I'm not gonna go through all of them. I'm just gonna give you examples. First and foremost uh, for entrance requirements is the English language requirement. Uh, and that English language requirement is the same for all of our undergraduate and graduate programs, whether it's a bachelor's degree or a diploma, uh, they all have the same requirement, which in terms of IELTS uh, would be an IELTS score of 6.5 with no individual band less than 6.0. Now it doesn't have to just be an IELTS. Um, I'm using that as an example here, um, but you could use a TOEFL, a uh, Pearson's test, Duolingo is accepted as well. Um, so you don't feel like you have to do the IELTS. There are other options. Uh, I'm just using the IELTS here as an example for right now. So first and foremost, for every single one of our programs, as you can see here, is the IELTS requirement of 6.5. Um, after that, oh, let me just go back up here for a moment. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, so what we have here, uh, again, is the IELTS requirement of 6.5 with no individual band less than 6. After the English requirement, what we're going to do is look at your academic grade 12 courses. Um, and there, what courses we're going to look at is going to depend on what program you apply for. So for instance, business, which I'll start with, um, we're gonna look at the IELTS score, we're gonna look at your grade 12 math, and then we're gonna look at one or two other grade 12 courses um, to, to see if you meet the entrance requirements. For these courses, uh, we would need a minimum of 6.0 to 7.0 uh, to be able to, to move on and meet our entrance requirements depending on which program diploma or degree you do. Uh, you can see the Bachelor of Arts, we do the English requirement, and then just two other academic courses, Bachelor of Science, English requirement, math, and of course, a science requirement as well for that. Now, one key thing is we're not going to look at all of your grade 12 courses, so not your overall GPA or your overall percentage. Um, we're just going to be looking at those individual courses that you need for entrance. Uh, so let's say, for instance, you want to do business, uh, you have your IELTS perfect, your math is great, your, a couple of your academic courses are looking really good, 
and maybe you struggled in history or maybe you struggled in a chemistry course. Um, just struggling in those two courses won't hurt your chance of being admitted as long as the courses that we need to look at for admissions with that program meet our requirements, you're good to go. Uh, so once again, we don't look at every course, we're just gonna look at those individual courses that we need for admission. Now I mentioned that IELTS uh, 6.5 is what we need. Uh, so what happens, let's say, if you don't have an IELTS of 6.5? Let's say you're an IELTS of 6 or 5.5. Uh, well, we do have some pathway programs, English upgrading options as well for select programs um, that has more than one intake every year. So this is our science, arts, um, business, we can do that as well uh, for that. Um, any program that's not a competitive admissions model. So most of our programs are what's called uh, open intake. So you just have to meet the minimum entrance requirements to get in. Uh, a couple of our programs, like our social work program, criminal justice, um, computer information systems, those are competitive admissions processes. So for those programs, we don't do pathways, um, but for the other programs, we will. Um, all of our upgrading programs, um, depending on where you are in the scale, uh, each upgrading level lasts for one semester, um, and students do need to meet minimum grades to pass and move on to the next level if you need to. Uh, the very lowest that we can accept is an IELTS of 4.5 with no individual band less than four. That would be kind of be where we'd start. Uh, and then every time you'd uh, finish one level for one semester, you would move on to the next one until you get into your program. Now, let's say you apply to a program uh, and you don't fully meet the entrance requirements for that program. What we will do is we will offer you a seat into an alternate program that you do meet the requirements for. Um, very easy example is, uh, let's say I'm going to start with uh, our business degree. Let's say your math is a little bit low and you don't meet the entrance requirements for the business degree program, but your math is good enough to meet the diploma program, we would offer you a seat in the diploma program, the two-year program first. Um, then once you finish the two-year diploma program, if your grades are strong enough, you could then move on into year three of the degree and keep moving on to finish your degree that way. So you can still ladder up, still move up to the degree while starting in the diploma. So we always, always try to work with our students as much as possible uh, to try to find you a suitable program if you don't meet the entrance requirements for your desired program. If down the line uh, you just start a program and you do want to switch or try something new, that's no problem. Um, students aren't forced to stay in the program that they start with. Uh, you're actually allowed to be able to switch and change things up as you move forward as well. Uh, myself, I actually started in our criminal justice program. Um, but after my first year, I just realized criminal justice wasn't for me. I uh, kind of wanted to do something different for career wise. Uh, so I switched into business um, going into my second year and loved it and ended up doing a fantastic job in our business program. So you are able to be able to switch as you move forward. So important dates and deadlines. So we have three different semesters, three different start dates at the university. We have our fall semester, which runs from September to yeah, December, that's that. Uh, we have our winter semester, which is a January start, and then the summer semester, which is a May start. Uh, fall, which is the September start time, that is kind of our main intake, the main start that we have for, for students coming forward. And you can see there for our application period, um, applications open October 1st, for the following September uh, and it will close on April 15th. So let's say for instance you're interested in applying for September 2021. Applications for that intake will open on October 1st 2020 for that. Um, and then there you can see we have a, a tuition payment deadline, a deposit payment deadline of $5,000 uh, which is due and then the remaining balance before May 1st is required for that. And the scholarship deadline. I'll talk about scholarships in just a little bit. Well, we do have a scholarship deadline of March 1st for our September start date. Next, winter semester, which is currently open right now. That's the semester, that's the intake we're currently accepting applications for. Uh, that one, applications run from May 1st to September 15th for our upcoming January 2021 intake as well. Uh, and that's the one that's currently open and available for that. And then summer, as you can see there, uh, May start. Applications are October 1st to January 15th for there. Uh, how to apply? Well, you can uh, do it uh, through VNIS here. 
uh, to be able to help you out to get all that going. But essentially, we do everything online. Uh, so once you do put your apply your your application through, uh, or have someone help you put your application through, and you get your offer. Uh, once you have your offer, all you need to do is pay your deposit and send in uh, your official documents, physical copies of your academic transcripts. Uh, once we have the deposit and your academic transcripts, you'll receive your official letter of acceptance and then start applying for your study permit for that. Now, right now with everything that's going on with COVID and the global pandemic, uh, our Canadian government has been doing a fantastic job to try to support our international students um, and especially through trying to keep things going with your study permits. So right now uh, in Vietnam, uh, our, our visa application centers are reopened from what I've been told. They're working as fast as they can to process things moving forward for that too. Uh, what they've also done, our Canadian government, is they have allowed for the first time ever, they have given permission uh, to our international students to actually start their studies online from home if they would like. And you can now complete up to 50% of your program online from home if you would like to start off with. Again, this is not a mandatory thing, it's up to you, um, but you can do it up to 50% from your home uh, to, try to, to try to reduce travel if you don't want to. If you're feeling a little hesitant, or you still want to try to get the, your education started and get it going, you can do up to 50% of your program online from home and it would not affect your postgraduate work permit status uh, at, at, in Canada afterwards as well. Uh, so our Canadian government is working very hard uh, to make sure that our international students are well taken care of in terms of your study permits and future work permits and where and when you can start your program as well. All right, let's talk about cost, which is always a fun thing to talk about. So for uh, per semester, uh, our tuition costs, um, which is based off of 12 credits, uh, would be for 7,560 Canadian dollars per semester. Um, that's for 12 credits, roughly about four classes. Um, if you want to take additional credits, additional courses, um, the tuition would be based on $630 per credit additional cost on top of that. Now, if you take a look at this cost, the $7,560 per semester, and you look at other Canadian universities, North American universities, uh, for a university in North America, this is some of the most affordable tuition uh, that you'll be able to find. Uh, we do this on purpose to try to make sure that, you know, tuition isn't as a, a much of a barrier for our students to be able to come to. Uh, on top of tuition, we also have our student fees, which every student pays, Canadian, international, every student pays these student fees per semester. Uh, when you apply to UFE in your very, very first semester, and it's only in your first semester, there's a one-time international administration fee of $1,450. Uh, after that, you have your medical and dental premiums, books and supplies, and then what it would cost if you wanted to live on campus. So if you wanted to live on campus at the residence building that I talked about, um, it costs about $6,000 for the two semesters. Um, and you can see how the, the fees are broken up. Pay a little bit more in the first semester, a little bit less in the second semester, but overall it comes out to about $6,000 Canadian dollars to live on campus. On top of the residence, uh, we say to budget around $2,000 per semester for other living expenses, uh, food, going out, hanging out with friends, that kind of stuff. Maybe you wanna travel a little bit. Uh, we say to budget about $2,000 per semester for your living expenses. So all in total, you can see at the bottom there, uh, roughly about 28 to $30,000 Canadian per academic year is what you wanna budget for tuition, living expenses, all of that as well. Now, when it comes to the residence building, um, it's not mandatory that you live in residence. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, uh, but it is an option. Uh, if you would prefer to live off campus, that's fine. No problem. Uh, we have a, a link on our website that you can go to look for off campus housing as well. Uh, if you prefer to do a homestay when you first come over, not everybody does, but some people do want to try a homestay when you first come over. Um, we have a connection with what's called the Canadian Homestay Network that can help get you hooked up with a homestay that way too. Uh, we don't run it through our university, uh, but we work with an organization that can help you do that as well. So once again, living on residence, not mandatory, uh, but it is an option if you would like to do that as well. 
Now, can't talk about fees without also talking about scholarships. Uh, we do have entrance scholarships for our international students coming in. We have two different scholarships. Uh, the first one, our biggest one, is worth ten thousand Canadian dollars uh, for your first year. These are all just one-time payouts; so they don't carry forward year to year. It's just a one-time. Uh, but for every semester, we give out five ten thousand dollar entrance scholarships. Uh, this is for students with a GPA of a three point five or higher. Um, three point five. When I convert that into kind of regular percentage-wise, uh, you're going to be looking at like an 8.0 to 8.5 out of 10 average total for your grade 12 year moving forward for that. Uh, with the $10,000, we also need students to supply two letters of recommendation uh, with their scholarship application. These letters can be from, from teachers, it can be from a principal, it can be from uh, if you do any volunteer work in your city and there's somebody who supervises that volunteer work. Uh, it can be a letter from them. Essentially, it needs to be two letters just saying why you should be the winner, the recipient of this $10,000 entrance scholarship for that. Uh, other than the $10,000 one, we also have a $5,000 scholarship uh, that has a GPA of 3.0. Students need to meet at least that. Um, for the $5,000 scholarship, uh, there is no additional application costs. Um, when you apply to the university, you'll be automatically considered for the scholarship. So there's no additional application that's required. Um, for the $5,000 one, this is 100% just based off of your merit grades, your, your grade 12 grades. So what we do for this one is we're gonna start, start at the very top of our GPA list and then work our way down until we've given out those 35 $5,000 scholarships uh, to the students. Again, once again, uh, this is a one-time first year entry scholarships for that as well. You can see at the bottom of the screen, uh, we do have some scholarship application deadlines for the fall entry, that's March 1st. And then for our winter January start, that is April, or sorry, is uh, August 1st for that as well. A cool thing about our scholarships is, even though these ones are just one-time first year entry scholarships, uh, we do have other scholarships you could apply for, for years two, years three, years four. There are hundreds of different scholarships that we offer at the university. And once you become a student, it opens up a whole other area of scholarship applications that you can do uh, for your program. Now, a question I get a lot too is, other than say scholarships, uh, could you potentially work part-time um, to try to make some money and help pay for your tuition? Uh, and absolutely, you can definitely do that. Um, you can work on or off campus um, while you're a student. If you work off campus, you can work up to 20 hours a week part-time during the school year, and then up to 40 hours a week during that summer break if you want to. Now, I mentioned earlier on that the QS stars gave us a perfect five out of five for the employability of our students. Uh, and the reason we, they do that is because we try as hard as we can to make sure that we prepare you for your next stage of your life, which is the career after you graduate. How we can help you out with your career success is one of it is actually our co-op program. Uh, so for those of you who aren't familiar with co-op, cooperative education, uh, what this is, this is very similar to a paid internship within your program. So if you apply for co-op and are successful to get into that program, uh, you would actually do uh, one semester full-time work, Monday to Friday, 40 hours a week of paid work in your field of study that you're doing. Uh, while you're doing this paid work experience, you're also still earning university credit that counts towards your future degree. Uh, so it really is the best of both worlds. You get some high level Canadian work experience that's paid and you're still earning credits for your degree. Uh, it's, it's a phenomenal program. I recommend it to every single student. Uh, if you come to our university, I say do co-op. If for whatever reason you decide to go to a different university and they have co-op, do co-op. Do it, do it, do it do it. Uh, it's honestly one of the best things I recommend to every single student, whether it's an international student or Canadian student, uh, because it really will help you get your first job after you graduate. Having that work experience uh, is a big boost, a big bonus um, when you're looking for your first job after you graduate. Uh, on top of co-op, we have other ways uh, that you can work on campus. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, some great ways to do it is as a research assistant for our professors. So you can see there we have 180 plus paid research assistant positions uh, that happen every single semester. You'd be working one-on-one -on -one with a professor on their project. 
Uh, often sometimes too, uh, they will let you work on your own project too, and then try to get some great research experience um, working for the professors on top of that. Now, in my personal opinion, uh, as a former student, I've got to say one of the areas that we do some of our best work is in our support systems for our students. Uh, I mentioned earlier that you know when I started this off, we talk about you know our university is far from ordinary. Uh, we try to go above and beyond to make sure that your time at our university is a success. A success, uh, and this is how we do it: is with all of these extra services that we have. This is ranging from personal, international, academic advisors. So in your very first semester at our university, our academic advisors will get in touch with you and then we will actually register you in your first semester courses. Um, so that way there's no confusion. We'll do it all for you for that first semester to make sure that you start your program off on the right track and you're in the right courses for that first semester as well. Uh, on top of academic advising, uh, we have some great personal free study tutoring sessions in the Academic Success Center. That's at the bottom of the screen there, you can see there. Um, that's free peer tutoring. Uh, we have third and fourth year students who can help you out with your studies. And it's program specific help. Uh, we have a math and stats center that's in there as well. So if you are doing um, you know, a heavy stats course or calculus or something like that and you're struggling a little bit, um, you can go to the math and stats center with your homework and just go help. I don't know what I'm doing. And they will help you with your homework. They won't do your homework for you. You still got to do your homework yourself, um, but they're there to be able to help you out as well. Uh, other than just the academic side of the things, uh, one of the, you can look at the counseling services. There's free counseling for students uh, who might be, say, going through a little bit of culture shock, you know, having a tough time adjusting to, to living on your own, coming out to Canada. We have free counseling services. Uh, we also have free student to student support staff. Um, at our peer resource and leadership center. Uh, so there's always people there to be able to make sure that you're taken care of, you're looking out for and places you can go to ask for help um, if you need it as well. Uh, we also have the Center for Experiential and Career Education. Um, this is where our co-op program is. Um, this is where our career center is located. Uh, they do career fairs, they do resume writing coaching, cover letter writing coaching, interview skill training uh, to really make sure that you are as prepared as possible when you go to try to apply for that job. Uh, the resume writing coaching, yeah, when, if you come out to North America and you're out here, I highly recommend uh, before you submit your first resume to a job, go to the career center have them take a look at your resume because what they will do is they will make sure that your resume is perfect and tailor-made for that specific job that you're applying for. Uh, they do an excellent job of making sure that every resume that comes to them is leaves uh, in, in better shape, better quality uh, to give you a good chance of landing that job that way too. Now on top of just making sure that your academic success is looking after your personal, your career and all that, we also want you to have fun. Uh, universities, there's so much cool stuff that goes on at a university outside of the classroom. Events, activities, sporting events, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so if, you, if all you do when you go to university is go to the classroom, you are missing out because there's a lot of cool stuff to do. You can see here that we have about 65 different clubs and associations, uh, all ranging from uh, an eSports Valley Club, which is a video game club. Uh, we have a dancing club. The different academic departments have student associations. So uh, physics student association, a global development studies student association, all that type of stuff. And they're always doing different events on campus. If you're interested in sports and you love watching sports or possibly playing sports, um, we do have varsity athletic teams, so you can go and watch them, them play. Uh, we have teams for basketball, volleyball, soccer, golf, wrestling, rowing, baseball, and rugby. So you can go and watch those games if you want. Uh, but we also have drop-in open gym time, intramural sports time. So if you want to come in and uh, help out with the badminton club and go play some badminton, we have that. Uh, drop-in volleyball, drop-in soccer, everything like that for the open gym times too. Uh, as well as a personal training center uh, and fitness facility for you. Some of the other ways you can have fun is by joining different groups. Uh, we have a Friends Without Borders group. Uh, this is an international friendship club, essentially, uh, where students, Canadian, international, come together uh, and you get a chance to meet some people in your very first week in class uh, if you want to be able to do that too. 
Uh, you can see in the bottom corner our Glow Yoga uh, event that happens every year. This is by far one of our biggest events on campus. Hundreds and hundreds of students uh, come out to do yoga in this really cool lighted area that you can see there. We put glow in the dark paint on so when they turn on those black lights you actually start to glow a little bit. Uh, there's some fun music that they put on in the background. It's, it's, it's a really cool event uh, that students can get to do as well. Uh, we also have our en route program, which you can see on the bottom here, this one, the off-campus events. Uh, so what the off-campus events are, this is where we take you to say downtown Vancouver, uh, we would take you potentially to Whistler to go skiing, snowboarding, uh, that type of stuff as well. So it's not just on campus, it's off-campus events uh, that we do for our students as well. Also, if you want to, uh, you can take advantage of our other worldwide partnerships and travel even more. So we have about 80 different partnerships worldwide with other universities. Uh, so if you want to do, say, maybe a summer program or a full semester program at another university while you're with us, you're more than happy to do that. So some of our students, when they're done their fall and winter semester, they might say go to Nanyang Technical University in Singapore for a summer program. Uh, or maybe our biology program is doing a two to three week study tour in Europe and they're going to go study things in, in Paris, London, Ireland, something like that. Uh, you could join them for three weeks uh, and, and study in those countries as well. So feel free to take advantage of all of our global partnerships. Uh, just because you're already studying abroad in Canada does not mean you can't still travel to other countries uh, to get some more experience. So myself, when I was a student at UFE, um, I actually did two exchange programs uh, through our university. I did one in France, uh, in Nice, France, and then I did one in India. Uh, and I uh, went to a school in Chandigarh, India uh, for a little while as well. Really cool, a lot of fun. Uh, I know what it's like to be an international student living and in, uh, studying in a different country, in a country where I don't know the language that well as well. So I've been there. I understand <laughs> it, it can seem like a daunting experience, but one of my favorite things I've ever done in life. Uh, you really do get to learn about yourself traveling and moving to a new place where you don't really know anybody. Uh, and I, I would do it again in a heartbeat. Uh, and I recommend uh, you know, doing international travel, uh, study abroad, overseas studies to, to everybody. Uh, it worked for me, I loved it. Uh, and I know everybody else would as well. Last little bit of what I have here is just about what our graduates say. Um, you can see here that our graduates, when they graduate and they leave, they leave happy. They recommend the university. They're able to get great jobs and they would recommend uh, our education system and what we do to pretty much anybody out there as well. Uh, so hopefully uh, one day we'll be able to have get you on campus and you can be one of our graduates uh, and leave happily and uh, enjoy your time with us as well. So that's it for me uh, in that presentation. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Uh, and then if we have any questions, uh, we'll be able to, to do that for you now and get some questions going for you. All right, we have a few questions in the Q&A section that we can choose to answer live. Uh, you can answer in the order. We'll type in there. Cool. All right, so in the Q&A section, we have some questions. I'm gonna bring them up here. Sorry for not doing those earlier, but I will get those going right now. So some of the questions that we have here is, if I have relatives and want to live with them, uh, would that be okay? Or is it required to stay on campus? Uh, totally okay. Go live with your relatives. I think that's fantastic. Uh, as I mentioned, no, you don't have to live on campus. So feel free. Uh, to, to, to go and live with your relatives uh, and to do that, more than welcome to do that. Next, I want to study a Bachelor of Civil Engineering. Uh, how many years do I have to study at the school and how much is the tuition for this program? That's a great question. Uh, first, I actually don't have a, a full engineering program. Uh, I have a one-year engineering transfer to the University of British Columbia. Uh, so what we do for engineering students, uh, we have the first year of the program. So you would do one year with us finish that first year, and then transfer into year two at the University of British Columbia, UBC. Uh, so it's a transfer pathway for engineering because we don't have the full program. 
the tuition for us is the exact same tuition that you saw in the presentation. Uh, so $7,560 per semester is what you would pay with us. And then once you would transfer to UBC, uh, you would do their rates, whatever that is uh, for their engineering program. All right, next question. Uh, does the major of civil engineering have a co-op? Uh, so again, don't have civil engineering. Um, so unfortunately, no co-op because no civil engineering. Uh, but when you are doing the transfer program that first year, um, I will say this, the first year engineering program is our first year of engineering is the exact same first year that you would take at any other engineering program. It is the most intense year of schooling you will ever do. So while every other student on campus who's doing say arts, business, that kind of stuff, in their first year, they might be doing about 30 credits in one year. For your first year of engineering, you're doing 55 credits. You're almost doing two full years worth of credits in one year. Uh, so you really don't have a lot of time to work uh, during that first year. It is intense. It's designed to be intense on purpose. Um, so if you do want to get into engineering, just be, be mindful of that, that you'll be very, very busy in that first year. Uh, next up, uh, how much do co-op international students subjects get paid in Canada? That's a really good question. So that's hard to say um, just because every co-op position is different. So there's not a set paid wage that students do for co-op. Um, I can tell you this though, in British Columbia where I am, we do have a minimum wage. So the lowest that you could earn is $14.60 per hour. Um, that's the minimum wage in British Columbia. But typically for our, our co-op positions, um, because they're higher level, they're a little bit more in depth, you get a higher salary, higher hourly wage than that. Uh, so it can't go lower than $14.60, um, but I would not be surprised if you get up to say $20 an hour even uh, doing some of those positions. Great question. Uh, can I work part-time while I'm studying? Yes, yes, you absolutely can. Uh, in fact, I encourage it. Uh, I mentioned you can work up to 20 hours a week off campus uh, during the school year, and then up to 40 hours a week um, during uh, the summer break, if you want to, so full-time that way. I worked all the time during my undergrad. Uh, I worked as a waiter uh, in the evenings, and I also worked part-time at a retail place uh, to be able to pay for my tuition. So I worked almost 35 hours a week while I was going to school, taking four to five classes every semester. Uh, I worked hard to be able to do that, so yes, you're more than able to, to be able to do that. And I, I actually, I think it's great when students work part-time as well, um, because it does help you get some, some great work experience uh, while you're a student. Next question is, I'm a freshman at a community college in the US, Cascadia College in Washington, USA. Hey, you're not too far from us. Hey, hello from Washington State. I would like to transfer this fall or next spring. Can you let me know if I can transfer my credits? Fantastic question. Short answer. Yes, you can. Longer answer, uh, it depends how many will actually transfer into your program. So yes, absolutely, we will look at transfer credits. That is never a question. But what we need to do is we need to look at every single course you're taking right now in the US to see how they will transfer to your program. So uh, let's say right now you're doing a business program in the US and you wanna transfer to a business program here in Canada, should be no problem most of those should transfer over pretty easy. But let's say you're doing a biology course right now in the US and you want to transfer to a criminology program, criminal justice program here, might be a little difficult to have those transfer to that program. So long way of saying, yes, you can, but we gotta take a little bit more closer look at those credits to see how they would transfer as well. Uh, next question we have here is, so if I want to major in psychology, $29,000 fees, including accommodation and foods already? Correct, yeah. So what you, would, you saw there for the $29,000, that would be for tuition, food, accommodation, all that. Uh, and that's for every program, whether it's psychology, business, uh, biology, uh, that would be the same tuition cost for everybody. So I say to budget, yeah, about 30,000 Canadian, 29,000 total per year of studies, what you'd want to budget for that. Great question. All right, next one. Oh, same one. This is the freshman from the community college. Already answered that one. Moving on. How many Vietnamese students do you currently have on campus right now? Uh, we have in between 45-ish right now. 
that we have on campus. We have about 45 Vietnamese students uh, from all over Vietnam, uh, primarily uh, Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi, uh, but we have some from Da Nang, uh, Vung Tao, uh, there's a couple others. Um, but yeah, primarily Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi are where most of our students are from. Uh, but yeah, we have about 40, 45 students right now from Vietnam. Cool, all right. Is it possible for me to apply this fall? I worry about COVID. Understandable. Uh, COVID has kind of taken us all by shock and surprise. Nobody could see this coming. Uh, and we're all worried. Um, we're all concerned about what that could be like. So in terms of studying this fall, uh, I'll just say this. Right now our applications are, are closed for fall. So we're not accepting any new intake of students. We're only accepting students for our, our January semester right now. Um, but in terms of if you were to study in fall, uh, our university, what we have done to, to make sure that we take this as serious as possible and that all of our students are, they're the priorities, their health, their well-being and making sure that they're taken care of. Uh, our university has actually made the decision to start the fall semester online. So all of our students, uh, Canadian international students right now, most of our programs are going to be done online in the fall. Uh, are, there's going to be some exceptions for the, the science labs, biology, chemistry, physics, that kind of stuff, um, but all the lectures will be done online. And so that's why you heard me say earlier that uh, for our new students coming in in the fall, uh, if they wanted to study online from their home country to start, they have that option. Uh, we've also had some students who have deferred and moved their start time to January. Uh, so that way they can come to Canada and have that in-person experience. Uh, but for those students who do start online, in September, they're more than welcome to come in January in person after that as well. Great question. Great, great question. All right. I have a, I'm a sophomore in university. My major is marketing. Can I transfer my grades to continue studying at your school? Absolutely. Uh, same thing applies to what I said earlier about transfer credits. Uh, definitely look at it. We'll definitely go to try to transfer as many as possible from your current program to the one we have in the U.S. as well. All right, we got two more questions here. Uh, if I join the co-op education program, uh, when will I join and graduate? The UFE will introduce a company for students or do the students need to find their position? Fantastic question. So we actually have co-op coordinators, so staff at our university that help you find the placements. Uh, so you don't have to go out and look for your own jobs. We have coordinators that'll take care of all of that for you as well. Uh, you can start and join co-op starting in your second year. So that first year of study, you can't do co-op, but starting in year two, you can start doing co-op work semesters. Um, when would you graduate? Great question. It would depend on how many co-op semesters you do. So every co-op semester you do, that actually replaces a study semester. So what I usually recommend for students to do is to do their co-op in the summer during that break so it doesn't interrupt your study time. Um, but if you would rather do a co-op or you have an awesome opportunity to do a great co-op in one of the study blocks, say September to December or January to winter, well, that now replaces a study time. So that study period now has to be made up at a later date. So typically, uh, we say if students do one year of co-op, so three semesters of co-op, three separate semesters, you usually would move back your graduation date by one year as well. So someone doing a four year bachelor's program who does three semesters of co-op, which is one full year of Canadian work experience, uh, they typically graduate in five years at that time. All right, one last question that I have here is, uh, our university psychology major lasts three or four years. May I ask, and if I wanna leave scholarships, what should I do? Like high IELTS, grades, GPA, social work, uh, or what? Hey, great question. Uh, so for our $5,000 scholarship, that's just GPA IELTS. That's all it is. It's just 100% based off your GPA for that one. Uh, the $10,000 scholarship, because they have those letters of reference, um, that's where they're going to look into other things than more than just your GPA. Yes, your GPA does matter, but for the $10,000 one, we look at things other than just GPA. Uh, this will be things like, uh, have you done any volunteer work in your school? Uh, do you show any leadership qualities in the classroom or outside of the classroom? Uh, we really want those letters of recommendation to tell us more about you than just that you're a good student. What type of leadership qualities you have? Uh, what type of achievements have you had outside of the, the, the GPA side? 
So really for that $10,000 one, those letters of recommendation, that's, that's huge. Those are the very, very important to give us a chance to get to know you better and to know what you're like um, outside of just being a student and what other qualities you have other than being very, very smart, which is always good. Uh, so that's where those letters of recommendation come in. So I hope that helps that. That looks like all of the questions because I saw the last one up here is the community college one, which I've answered as well. So that looks like most of the questions there. Uh, does anybody else have any other questions they would like answered? Uh, if you do, feel free to, to, to ask it now. I'll give a couple more seconds or minutes to, just for you to, to, to type anything in if you do. Um, if for whatever reason we don't have any more questions, thank you all so much for joining. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free uh, to get in touch uh, with me through the through Venice. Uh, I'd be more than happy to answer any more of your questions. More than happy to chat with you one-on-one. -on -one. If you want to set up a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call or a Skype call or something like that, I'd be more than happy to touch base with you and to answer your questions in that regard too.